Hello everyone, this is SF Ninja, and I'm going to do a quick basic bike inspection, pre ride bike inspection video. And I thought I'd just share this with you, since some of you have been asking. So, the first thing I like to check on the bike is the tire pressure, and I'll just take a tire pressure gauge, check to see that the front is at 36 psi and the rear is at 42 psi. Of course, this is going to be different for different tires. Of course, you check the tire pressure when the pressure, when the tires are cold, which means it hasn't, you haven't been riding the bike for about three to four hours. Otherwise, you'll get an incorrect reading because the pressure will be higher than it should be. The other thing to check is the tread wear. Make sure it's not too worn down. Um, these tires usually come with, I'm not sure if it's like a standard for tires, but they should have wear bars that go perpendicular to the grooves of the tread. So here's the groove and the wear bar would be going this way. And same for the rear tire. And basically, if I can sort of describe this, say this is the wall of the groove of the tire. We've got this wear bar here, and it's normally like this on a brand new tire. So you can't even, you often have a hard time seeing the wear bar. And then as the tire wears down, that wear bar is gonna get closer and closer to the surface as the main tread wears down. So the groove has now gone from this deep to that deep. And now you can really see the, the relief of the bump of the, of the uh, wear bar and that lets you know that it's time to replace the tire. So that's tires and tire pressure. Uh, one time I did a check and I actually found a nail embedded in my rear tire and so I had to, it was holding pressure so I thought alright uh, just ride it to the, sh uh, to the shop slowly and got there without any problems and had the tire replaced. The next thing to check is controls. Controls like the clutch Make sure it pulls in nice and precisely the way you want it to. And you can always adjust your clutch with, the, uh, with these screws and this thing here. Just loosen them up, adjust it again, do the lock nut to lock it in place, and then test the, uh, the clutch engagement and release. You gotta check your front brake actuation. Check your rear, sit on the bike, do a little quick rear brake actuation. You just roll it a little bit and just engage the brake and make sure that it works. Uh, as far as gear shift goes, I don't really know of any special thing to do other than to hold in the clutch, shift up a bit, shift down a bit, put it back in neutral, and if it moves smoothly and comfortably, then it's okay. Um, I'll also just steer it full right, full left, make sure nothing is getting tangled or garbled, make sure the hoses and the cables aren't, are all in the right places, and it steers easily without any problems. So... Of course, you want to check your throttle, very important. Make sure it's just got a snappy play to it. I like to have my throttle with basically minimal uh, play in the throttle. The manual recommends one to two millimeters of play in the throttle, but I've got, pretty much got zero play. And the play is normally to account for the fact that the cable is going to shift and extend a bit as you, or contract as you steer the bike. So they recommend a little bit of play, but I haven't had any problem with the play completely gone. And the previous, I got that from the previous owner. The previous owner said, yeah, I took out all, the, had the mechanics take out all the play from the, uh, from the throttle. And I, I actually like that because it just feels a lot more precise. So have I covered all that? Clutch, throttle, front brake, rear brake, gear shift. So that's controls and steering. Then there's lights and electrics. So you turn on the bike. And you can test your high beams, low beams, make sure those, those work. During the daytime, always ride with your high beams on. Uh, check the instrument cluster, nothing's out of order. Uh, you can check uh, the brake lights, of course. This is how I check the brake light. Put my right hand on the, the front brake. And put my hand back here. And as I click the front brake, I can see the rear I can see the brake light illuminating my hand. It's, just, it's that simple. And the same thing for your foot brake, your rear brake. Put your foot up on the rear brake and just click it a few times and look for the red flash on your, the palm of your hand. So that's how I check to make sure my rear brake light, well, the brake light is working. And check your blinkers. Left turn signal, blink, blink, all good. Right turn signal, blink, blink. All right, and then disengage and shut her down. Don't want to drain the battery. 
So that's lights, electrics. And after that, there's uh, oil and fluids in general. The oil indicator on the F4i is on the right-hand side of the bike. There is a there is a window. Oh, targeting, targeting. All right. There's a window here. Not sure if you can see it, but it's right there. This hole in the fairing. And through there, you can see a um, a window. And in that window, there's on the border of that window, the metal border. There's two markings. And when you straighten the bike, stand the bike straight up, the oil level should land somewhere in between those two marks, which means you're within tolerances for the oil level in your bike. And there's also checking your rear brake reservoir, make sure when you straighten up the bike, when you stand it straight up, and it's not on its stand, the fluid level should land somewhere between upper and lower for the rear brake reservoir. Coolant reservoir has an upper and lower marking as well. So you just want to make sure those aren't those haven't changed abruptly overnight or whatever. Make sure they're in the right range. As far as front brake fluid reservoirs go, so there's the rear, uh, sorry, the front brake fluid reservoir. And that tells you, and you can see that the color is pretty much perfectly clear. On that fluid starts to look kind of really golden, golden brown. It's probably time to flush the brake fluid and change it out because it should be perfectly clear. After that is a chassis and chain. So chassis kind of refers to suspension, and to be honest, I don't really know anything about that, so I'm not even going to touch that subject. Only to say that I look for, I look around at like the swing arm area, and I just look for anything that looks like it's about to fall off or is bent out of shape or doesn't look right somehow. Uh, just something that's obvious to anyone with moderate common sense, I guess. But I really don't know exactly the systematic way to, of what to look for. So the other thing I do look at is a chain and basically you can lift the chain up and down and take a ruler and measure the amount of slack and make sure it falls within the tolerance that it says that it says in your manual. And of course I don't use a I don't use an, an actual chain lube product because you can then get dedicated chain lube. I just use what it says in the manual. And the manual says use heavy gear oil. And I'll show you the gear oil I'm using to lubricate the chain, which is, by the way, the same oil I use on the chain for the Ninja, because that's what it says in the manual for the Ninja as well. It's a Spirax, Spirax HD gear oil, heavy duty, SAE 85W-140. So that's the gear oil I use, and. I've had some people say on forums it's not a good thing to do, but I do it anyway. I use a toothbrush to spread the oil, a thin coat of the oil on the chain. I just sort of make sure it gets in between the links of the chain. So it's, that's about it. And of course, if it's on the swing arm stand, you just go like this with the wheel, or this way, and you just, and just let it freely roll and just hold the brush there and just let it pick up and just sort of sweep it back and forth as you're rolling it and it, you lube the chain in like no time. I usually lube the chain every 500 miles. So for me that's every three weeks pretty much because on a weekend I'll do 100 miles in a day. So 400, two weekends is 400 miles. So it's about three weeks and I have to lube the chain. So that's it for the chain and the chassis. That's what I know. After that, there's uh, the stands, and well, bike's standing there on the stand. Some bikes have two stands, like the Ninja, center stand and the side stand. So you just make sure that stuff works. And how do I remember all this, all this stuff? Well, in the MSF, when you take your MSF course, they're going to teach you a thing called T-Clocks, which is the handy acronym to help you remember. Tires, T, uh, C is controls, L is lights, O is oil, Yes, the other C is chassis or chassis and chain. And finally S is stands, so that's T clocks. T dash C L O C S. Hmm. So I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I guess one thing they don't mention is the that I think is kind of important is um cleaning your mirrors if they're dirty before you take off, cleaning your vision surfaces. So that's all there is for that. Signing off.